opening the season with Don Q sort of sets everyone up on a high. You get all of the excitement of the technical prowess of all these amazing dancers, but you are telling a story, and I think that's what the company is so good at. It's full of like, you know, pyrotechnics and comedy, and it's got a really touch and love story at the center of it as well. Don Quixote was one of the first ballets that I've watched. When I started as a little girl, I thought, this is exactly what I want to do. Don Quixote is a bit of a dreamer. I'd like to think that he has this vision of this quest that he's got to go on. His friend and companion, Sancho, gets him ready with the lance and the sword and everything and says, right, let's go on our journey. He's going on a quest to sort of save, not the world, but many different problems along his way, looking for, I don't know, just heaven, I guess, in his mind. Sort of a little crazy, but not really. Don Quixote comes in on his uh, wooden horse into this Spanish town dressed up almost like a knight. It's a shock for everyone, but he seems to like Kitri and he sort of like flirts with her a little bit and she realizes that it pisses Basilio off. Basilio is a really fun-loving young guy. He's a barber and he's desperate to get with Kitri. They're kind of like thick as thieves already. I feel like they've got this kind of attraction with this Spanish sultry energy about it as well. Her dad is just worried about her future, like every dad. He's trying to marry her with a rich man, and she just wants to marry the one she loves, and that's Basilio. I'm not 100% sure what it is the quest that Don Quixote is on. I think he wants to follow his dreams, and that's ultimately what he does throughout the whole of the ballet. For the principals, it's tough, really tough. And the challenge is, that they've also got to have fun, because Carlos insists on it. Basilia's like one of those really tough technical roles. There's such high expectations in terms of all these technical demands of the turns, of the tricks and the jumps. You feel like you have to get out there and just like deliver, deliver, deliver. Kitri is one of the most energetic roles that I have done. It's actually quite technically hard so many virtuoso steps that, you know, you have to control the levels of your energy. The hard thing is to finish act one and then realize they still have two more to go. <laughs> ah. Perfect. Perfect. My job is to, to put on the Carlos Acosta production. So it can be tiny little details or it can be major sort of scenes. It's, I've got to make sure that they do it his way. When you ask them to dance, go, you and us, dance, and... The whole cast has to be sort of super energetic from curtain up to curtain down, basically. Rehearsing this ballet in the studio is one thing, but the second you get on stage, it just feels like a whole, whole different beast, really. Carlos expects from the dancers vitality, spontaneity, and energy. He wants not only his audiences, but he also wants his dancers to feel that they're part of this, this story and this journey. He has this great ability of coming into a room, throwing a load of energy at us, and then I feel that we then throw the energy back at him, and I think that's a really great way of working because you all feel like you're part of, of this amazing journey of putting this ballet together. <laughs> The ballet is hard, stamina-wise, it is very technical, but it's super warm. It can be bigger than life, because that's what the ballet is about, being bigger than life. I think it's a sort of ballet that afterwards you're going to go home, like, kind of dancing through the car park. Just like Sleeping Beauty or Nutcracker, this is now embedded in our repertoire and it is now part of the Royal Ballet's history. Mm -hmm.